According to a 10-year-old article by Glamour.com, the most romanticized profession out there is architecture. And I could not agree more. Whenever a movie requires a hunky, sophisticated yet artsy leading male protagonist, their number one job choice for that dude is an architect. But unlike the movies where architects are represented as sensitive, tormented artists trapped in a handsome man's body, in reality, most architects are just normal people. Anyways, for today's video, we are going to react to my favorite show ever, which is How I Met Your Mother. So for those of you who have not watched the show, the story follows the life of our main character, Ted Mosby, who by the way is an architect as he tries to find love. Anyways, let's just jump into it. Hey, I wish I could join you guys, but I gotta get back to my apparently boring job. Your job's not boring. Robin thinks so. Dude, lots of chicks think architects are hot. Think about it. You create something out of nothing. You're like God. There's nobody hotter than God. Mm, I love it when you quote scripture. <laughs> Okay, so most of the people I have met either have one of two extreme reactions to my profession when I tell them that I'm an architect. So one reaction is that they are extremely interested in what I do, ask me about the things we do as an architect and stuff like that. And then the other people are not so impressed and, you know, easily get bored when I tell them I'm an architect. Okay, let's keep watching. Hey, just out of curiosity, if a guy told you he was an architect, what would you think of that? Are you kidding? Architects are hot. How do you think Mr. Brady scored a babe like Carol? Solid points. And what made you decide you wanted to become an architect? Well, you know, soul of an artist, hands of a master craftsman. It was inevitable, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna be honest guys, my reasons for becoming an architect were not that philosophical and were not that awesome. Uh, the actual reasons why I become an architect is one, because my family has a construction company and it made a ton of sense to become an architect to be able to help them with our construction company and help make it grow. Also, they needed an architect so yeah, I became an architect. And then the second reason was that I thought that architects had like a treasure trove of unlimited amounts of money. Boy was I wrong. Usually architects hit their stride at their late 40s. 40s to 50s so that's when you begin to build your client base and receive a ton of projects and therefore a lot of money but as young as 20 to 30 architects usually struggle to find their client base and struggle to find their design style usually it takes 10 to 15 years to actually find your style and be known for your style let us move on i bet you can draw can't you <laughs> you should draw me well i could try but you might end up looking like a mid-century try level <laughs> okay, so for those of you who are wondering what a mid-century tri-level is, this is what it looks like. Also, unlike popular belief, most architects are not really that good at drawing. We're just good at drawing houses and coming up with designs, but most of us can't even draw portraits. Especially me, I'm not really that good at drawing portraits and other stuff like that. Anyways, let's get back to the show. The awards are nice, they look good on my shelf. But none of that acclaim means anything compared to the joy of seeing the sun rise over your first building. Wow. I would love to watch the sun rise with you. I know you would. It's the job. Okay, so a little backstory for this episode, Barney was actually pretending to be Ted Mosby the architect for those two previous scenes we have seen. So here is what actually happened. <laughs> See ya. Sorry, my uh intern had to leave. Oh, well that's too bad. I'm Anna, by the way. Ted Mosby, architect. <laughs> okay, so quick fact. So before becoming an architect, you usually need to have two years experience as an architectural apprentice or as an intern. So here in the Philippines, we call them architectural apprentices. So here's a simplified process to becoming an architect. You spend five years in architecture school, and then you graduate. And then after graduation, you take up two years of apprenticeship under an architect or under an architectural firm. And then after that two years of internship or apprenticeship, you take six months to review for the board exam. Or you don't, you can just directly go to the board exam. And then when you pass the board exam, congratulations, you are now an architect. <laughs> Just for fun, I've, uh, I've sort of been working on my own idea of what I think the building should be. Okay, so let's pause it right there. So let's take a look at Ted's office right here. So Ted is working in an architectural firm and usually in architectural firms, you are not really given your own office. If you're a junior architect, you just have like this whole desk space and that's it. Right here is the most important drafting instrument of them all. 
So this is called a drafting brush. So if you guys are having mysterious dust and mysterious smudges appearing on your paper, that is probably because you need one of these drafting brushes. So the sources of those mysterious black smudges and black dirts on your paper are leftover eraser dusts and also leftover dusts from the graphite of your pencils. So every now and then you just use your drafting brush to brush off those dusts and that should lead to a cleaner drafting experience. Mr. Druthers asked if you were making the trees or waiting for them to sprout on their own. And he stared at me until I laughed. I'm done. Okay, so if you're new in an architectural firm as an apprentice or as a junior architect, they usually will give you this mind-numbing tasks like painting scale model trees or like cutting a bunch of paper because they want to test your patience as a person and because architecture has a ton of tasks like this that would drive any normal person crazy. Ah, finally. I wondered whether you were making the trees or waiting for them to sprout on their own. <laughs> he uses the same joke on Ted. <laughs> uh, anyway, here they are. Hmm. Okay, let's rewind a little bit. Okay, if you guys would look behind Ted, that table right there is called the drafting table. So an incline of 20 to 30 degrees is usually the sweet spot to avoid back pains when you're drawing. So yeah, that's the reason why the table is inclined so that your back doesn't hurt when you're drawing on the far side of the table. Our client was a major bank and financial services company in Spokane. They wanted a modern skyscraper that still captured the distinct flavor and history of the Northwest. Ladies and gentlemen, and I give you the Spokane National Bank Building. That's a p <laughs> Okay, so the chances of this sort of presentation mishap happening is really slim because before presenting to a client, you usually meet with the client a ton of times in order to perfect your design. So yeah, if this happens, it'll be extremely funny though. Uh, after Victoria and I broke up, I had some free time, so Called up a few architect friends and put together a little team called the T-Squares. See that? The floor's uneven. And the window placement is rubbish. You know, if a genie gave me one wish, I would knock down that wall and create a nice flow. Great wish. There's too much hard wood, right? <laughs> that is such an accurate representation of what a basketball team of architects would actually be doing in a substandard gymnasium. Anyways. It's you. It's me. I saw you in the street. Are you Annie? Yes. Dad? Are you acting out the last scene of Sleepless in Seattle with little dolls? How long have you been out here? Ten seconds. Yeah, just the last scene. Oh, Ted. Again. <laughs> okay, shout out to those architects and architecture students who play with their scale models. Half of the time making scale models, I actually probably spend playing with the scale model. <laughs> that is why I am starting my own architecture firm, Mosbius Designs. Mosbius Designs has failed. <laughs> but Alex and Jessica's love reminds us that... <laughs> Classic Schmosby. <laughs> Classic Schmosby. <laughs> okay, so that is one of the sad truths of architecture is that it is really hard to establish yourself in this business unless you have this really unique design style that you are the first in the field to ever create it or to use that design style. But either way, it's it's really hard, you know. It's it's kind of like selling paintings. Over the next couple of weeks, I dove into work. It felt great to be working on something that I really cared about. Finally, the morning of the presentation arrived. And we believe this timeless design will radiate the strength and stability that is Goliath National Bank. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, so those adjectives that Ted actually used, strength and stability, that was his design concept for the bank. Because I'm guessing that Goliath National Bank wants to represent strength and stability because it is a bank. So if you guys look closer at his design, they're like large pillar-like structures or arches, if you will. 
and it looks very stable. So that is Ted's design concept. So when presenting your design to a client, you need to come up with a really strong design concept that aligns with your client's principles or your client's company's principles. So that is what Ted did here. And I think Ted actually did a bang up job with this one. And you know, his design is pretty good, you know? It's really good. Later that night, we ran into Barney. Hey, Barney, give me the good news. He didn't get it. What? The board decided to go with Sven. Okay, so sometimes that happens. At the end of the presentation, the client seems to love your design. But unfortunately, you are not the only architect presenting to that client. They are probably going to another architect to see if that guy's design is better. And if they happen to like that guy's design, then, you know, it's bad luck for you. But do not worry, that is a rare occurrence. Um, usually, clients just go to one architect. I'm Sven Jorgensen. With me are Sven Pilsen and Sven Johansson. And we are Sven! You are Goliath's National Bank. You are cutting edge. You are new. You are fresh. Women want to be with you. Men wish to harm you. But the fool who dares challenge you shall be crushed. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing this is an exaggerated stereotype of an architect. That architect just wears black. So I think Sven just exaggerated our stereotype by wearing black unitards and also wearing shades. Let's get back to the show. Your headquarters will tell the world of these facts. Oh, and one more thing. Don't look. <laughs> It just appears out of nowhere. You, Bonnie Stinson, head of the search committee. Oh my god, that's me! You, Bonnie Stinson, are a man of power and virility. Your office shall be here, in the head of a Tyrannosaurus Rex! I never knew. Okay, so let us pause it right here and look at the detail of the scale model. So if you guys would see the detail, they actually ripped off Frank Gehry's popular design style. So Frank Gehry's style is using titanium plates for the exterior facade or for the envelope of the building. So yeah, I'm guessing they're trying to emulate Frank Gehry for this design. On your large desk of Honduran Rosewood shall be this button. What does the button do? Press it! Press it for glory! This is the most awesome building in the universe. There is no way this building could be more awesome. There is a strip club in the letter N. <laughs> okay, so that is usually one of the surefire ways to get your clients to like your design is to actually research about the client and what they likes and then implement it into your design. We're opening a restaurant called Rib Town and we want it to be shaped like a cowboy hat. Look, I need the work. I don't, I don't have any other options. Well, there's always that teaching job. Yeah, I didn't work this hard to be stuck in some crappy dead-end teaching job. No offense, Lily. Okay, another hard truth about architecture is that usually you have no choice but to take the client and what they want you to design. So yeah, this scene is pretty accurate. Although I have never been tasked to design a restaurant shape like a hat. But you know, I've definitely been tasked to design some weird stuff like a gingerbread house right here. I got peed on three times today. No arguments here. <laughs> I, I just gotta nail this hat building, so I'll see y'all in three days. The next three days, I worked harder than I'd ever worked in my life. <laughs> I love how he's like looking at different angles of that. Here you have it, gentlemen. Rip town. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Ted, listen, you're great and you've done a real special job here, and you're gonna make some other restaurant very happy someday, but uh, we have uh, decided to go another direction here. <laughs> what? <laughs> Feast your eyes on... If you guys look closer at Sven's design, I'm guessing this is a poke at Frank Gehry's design because people say that Frank Gehry's design all look alike. He just changes one aspect of his design on another building and then it's a new building. So they just placed a hat on this T-Rex. So I'm not sure if the writers of the show was trying to sneak a poke at Frank Gehry, just change a little bit of the design. And boom, GNB Tower is now ripped down. Anyway, I would be honored if you, if you took a look at my building. This is hideous. You'll never be an architect. 
You'll never be an architect. You'll never be an architect. You'll never be an architect. You'll never be an architect. Wait, I was mistaken. You most definitely will be an architect. Really? These are astonishing handlebar, Pete. <laughs> Okay, so if there's one thing to take away from that scene, is that architecture is subjective. So sometimes people are gonna hate on your designs, but that does not mean it is bad. So don't be discouraged if one instructor tells you that your designs are bad, maybe another instructor will like that design type. If all the instructors don't like your design, well, maybe there's something wrong with your design and, you know, you need to improve it. We'll have a rooftop zen garden for quiet contemplation. We'll have a reflecting pool in the lobby where... Local children can come to make wishes. The new GNB. A place of work that you can call home. Thank you. And, um, welcome home. So Ted did a good job in presenting his design there and he used one of the most basic techniques architects usually use when presenting to clients is that to make the clients feel an emotion. In this case, Ted made the clients feel that his design will be just like home. Therefore, the client's brain is filled with all this nostalgia and happy memories about home and from that point on, they are going to associate Ted's design with those happy emotions and therefore making his design more memorable. This is the 18th floor ETR. Basically, Bilson wants a room just like this, only two stories up on our floor. Wait, what's an ETR? It's the employee transition room. What does that mean? People get fired in here. <laughs> That's horrible. Ew. Why do you need a room specifically for firing people? Well, um, GNB feels that people need a safe, secure space to deal with the news. Yeah. Now, when you leave the dismissal space, you'll exit into what I'm calling the Rebirth Tranquility Hallway. Uh-oh. <laughs> here, you'll find a soothing oval chamber with a trained grief counselor. It's right here, past the New Beginnings Fountain. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so that is another textbook architect technique, is to put catchy names on your designs. So by slapping some fancy memorable titles on areas of your design, um, you can easily gain the attention of your client, and most likely they are going to appreciate your design more. And there you have it. Instead of a drab, dark prison cell, a nurturing womb birthing you into a new life. I love it. Really? Yeah. Nice work, Ted. Thank you. Can you add some of these touches to the existing 18th floor ETR as well? Absolutely. Great. Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm thinking this wall. They're fired. What? I wanted this room, this exact room, two floors up. But you're fired! <laughs> now get the hell out of here. <laughs> hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I guess I'm going to end the video right here. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below for more videos like this from me, your boy Leon. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you on my next video. Flying peace.